Hello there, my fellow squad mates, and welcome back to our lore series about Imperial Guard vehicles. So, we have talked about the Bane Blade, we have talked about the Lehman Russ, we have talked about Chimeras, and we have talked about many kinds of artillery. For today though, I wanted to cover something a little bit less famous than all those vehicles. Of course, that doesn't mean today's topics are not interesting. Quite the contrary, as they are very good vehicles at what they do. And, if the title didn't spoil it, they are the Torux APC and the Taurus All-Terrain Vehicle. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about them, shall we? The Torox is an armored personnel carrier, or APC, in use by the Imperial Guard. It is a common sight within the armories of the Imperial God, and was designed to hit hard and fast by exploiting gaps in enemy lines or plugging gaps in the Imperium Zone. Its capacity to punch through seemingly impossible terrain also makes it an ideal counterattack asset. Guard commanders will often hold back squads of short-ranged, hard-hitting infantry in Torox APCs, throwing them in to blunt enemy breakthroughs before the foe can build momentum. The twisted wreckage of tanks and piles of corpses, which might block other reinforcement efforts, are no issue for the Torox, which will adroitly skirt around such obstacles with ease. For the same reasons, they are also regularly employed as light reconnaissance vehicles, or tasked with running escort duty for columns of artillery. The Torox will swiftly deploy squads of heavy infantry, countering unexpected threats with overwhelming firepower until reinforcements can be brought to bear. Though slightly less robust than the Chimera, Toroxes are the swiftest ground transport vehicles in the Imperial Guard, and as such they are used for rapid redeployment and for vanguard maneuvers ahead of the main force. There is no better delivery system for small groups of soldiers armed with devastating weaponry, and veterans, special weapon teams, and command squads, who have shown an aptitude for close quarters firefighting, are often assigned a Torox to carry them into battle. After the Torox surges through the withering hail of incoming enemy fire, the hatches burst open and the passengers pour out, flamers and melta guns blazing. Though lightly armored, the Torox still packs a punch. Mounted on its hull are a pair of autocannons that can mow down enemy forces as it roars into the breach. Once its infantry payload has disembarked, it can continue to provide a mobile base of heavy fire for them, moving alongside the troops as an assault escort. Alternatively, it may break from its former passengers and head to some other part of the battlefield where it can lay waste to a fleeing enemy unit, or pick up and deliver a fresh infantry squad to their target. The rugged, castellan pattern quad track unit allows Toroxes the ability to negotiate even the most tangled terrain with ease. Axial servo dampeners redistribute the weight of the vehicle across its four tracks as it moves allowing jagged outcrops and unevenly piled rubble to be traversed at full throttle. The Torox's mobility is so reliable that Imperial Guard commanders often elect to bring them on long campaigns, that range across multiple war fronts. Whether their regiment ends up fighting inside a crumbling hive city, through the knotted jungles of a death world, or across the open plains of a barren planet, the Torox will perform its duty admirably. The Torox is a robust infantry assault vehicle, and is heavily armed with thick plates and equipped with heavy weapons to both support Imperial infantry and bring heavy firepower to bear on the enemy. It is primarily armed with a set of twin-linked autocannons, one located on each side of the vehicle's hull. It can have an armored turret added on top of the vehicle, and its twin-linked autocannons located on the turret. This allows a 360-degree field of fire and an elevated firing position. It can also be equipped with either a pintle-mounted storm bolter or heavy stubber, either on top of the vehicle or equipped as part of the turret. 
It can also also make use of ball bars on the front to protect from debris and can be equipped with many other standard and non-standard Imperial upgrades and attachments. All of these include a searchlight, relic plating, a dozer blade, recovery gear, smoke launchers, extra armor plating, fire barrels, a hunter-killer missile launcher, camouflage netting, and an auger array. The Torox Prime This is a variant of the standard Torox APC that was built for use by the Elite Militarum Tempestus, using the efficient and flexible Torox design. The vehicle's chassis incorporates arcane technology, allowing it to sustain Tempesta Scions while they operate in extremely hostile environments, up to and including the vacuum of space. The vehicle can be internally pressurized and features an array of life support technology. Furthermore, a Torox Prime's engines, using the proper rituals and prayers, are capable of channeling magnetic force into the APC's tracks enabling the vehicle to cling to vertical surfaces and even operate in zero-gravity conditions. The Torox Prime's weapon loadout is equally versatile. Whether blasting enemy infantry apart with hails of missiles or Torox Gatling cannon fire, or bringing down tanks and fortifications with their lightweight battle cannons. The exceptional versatility of the Torox Prime was expertly used in the Scarus Sector, when the Sector's Scola Progenium facility came under attack by a Death Guard warband. The 68th Deltic Lions, having battled the worshippers of the Plague God many times before, rushed to defend the world against the emerging corruption. Rather than becoming bogged down in a battle of attrition, a battle that the Death Guard would have surely won, the Deltic Lions used their many Torox Primes to move swiftly to wherever the Death Guard lines were weakest. Pinning the entirety of their force against a single enemy flank forced the lumbering Chaos minions to reposition. But before they could respond properly, the Tempestus Scions re-embarked and dispersed. Repeated fainting attacks allowed the Deltic Lions to lure the enemy deep into an icy ravine, where the snow and the cold further hampered the heretic Astartes' movement. The Torox Primes, on the other hand, were able to ascend to the clifftops on either side of the ravine, from which the Scions rained hell down upon their target. Hotshot last guns incinerated putrid flesh, while Torox patterned Gatling cannons, battle cannons, and missile launchers blasted the enemy into oblivion. The Torox Prime can have its turret removed and a Torox missile launcher system equipped, or just have its turret and weapon removed to lessen the vehicle's weight. The vehicle can also be equipped with a pintle mounted storm bolter or heavy stubber, either on top or mounted on its turret. It can also make use of ball bars on the front, and its possible upgrades are pretty much the same as the regular Torox I mentioned before. Some more famous examples of individual Torox Primes include Iron Talon The Iron Talon of the 55th Capic Eagles Regiment took a fearsome toll on the forces of the Crimson Slaughter Chaos Space Marines during fighting on the Ibrekian Ice Worlds. During this battle, the Iron Talon held the Frost Jaw Crevasse Bridge for over one solar hour, until reinforcements could arrive, forcing the enemy to retreat. Noble Blade The Noble Blade of the 32nd Fatoid Eagles is notable for its participation in the assault on the orbital station Valheim to retake the station from the Greenskin Pirates which had captured it. The Noble Blade traversed the station's outer hull and allowed its Tempesta Scions to infiltrate and cripple the Orc defenders. Unmerciful The crew of the Unmerciful, a Torox Prime of the 22nd Fatoid Griffins, possessed the highest kill ratio of any other vehicle in the ranks of that regiment. Its accuracy has seen Orc mobs, Termagant swarms, and Chaos Cultist hordes scythe down en masse. Huntsman The Huntsman of the 9th Iotan Gorgons 
proved its worth time and time again during the war on the death world of Gaur X. The vehicle sped through its toxic mist, spearheading a string of ambushes, which saw the traitor forces of the Death Guard once again crushed in just a few weeks' time. The Taurus The Taurus is a light, sturdily built, all-terrain utility and tractor vehicle used on many frontier worlds. Its rugged drive axles are individually powered by high-yield galvanic motors, allowing the vehicle to maintain its speed even when some of its wheels may be damaged or even destroyed. The Taurus and many similar vehicles have been used in Imperial exploration teams and sometimes even by brigands, marauders, and rebel factions. The Taurus is even used as a light attack and reconnaissance vehicle by the Elysian drop troop regiments of the Imperial Guard. The Elysians have modified the Taurus for airborne operation, stripping off any unneeded weight so it can be carried into battle by their Valkyrie Sky Talons. The Taurus comes in two flavors. The four-wheeled Taurus Rapid Assault Vehicle, which serves as a long-range scout vehicle, mounting potent anti-personnel firepower in the form of either a heavy flamer or Taurus grenade launcher, and the second, the six-wheeled and much more heavily armed and armored Taurus Venator. The Taurus grenade launcher can either use anti-infantry frag grenades or anti-vehicle crack grenades. The Taurus Venator The Elysian regiments often deploy Taurus Venators in support of their infantry, where the punch of a last cannon or multi-laser is often a welcome asset against heavy armor. They are also used in long-range scouting missions, as well as behind enemy lines, where they are capable of operating for extended periods of time without resupply due to their galvanic systems. These vehicles can also be used to carry extra supplies for the ground infantry, such as weapon power packs, food or water. This allows squadrons to operate for extended periods without resupply. The Taurus Venator is armed with a twin-linked multi-laser for anti-infantry work or a twin-linked last cannon for anti-vehicle duty. Both variants can be equipped with a variety of camouflage netting and extra armor plating for enhanced crew protection, and also a hunter-killer missile launcher for added firepower, a searchlight, a homing beacon, and smoke launchers. The Venator variant is also capable of carrying two hunter-killer missile launchers in addition to its standard armament. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Torox and the Taurus vehicles for today. Are you a fan of either of these two? Do you have or had any of them in your army? Let us know of your experience in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you'd like to give my channel a small helping hand, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a peaceful day. The Emperor Protects.